what's happening kids okay we've got a question here we're going to try to solve together really quickly uh, says genes a and b are located on the same chromosome if two individuals with the genotype shown below are crossed which genotype could be formed so immediately i can see when you have notation that looks like this where there's two lines and you have some letters whoops what's going on here when you have some letters this means that the genes are located on the same chromosome okay I, you can do it horizontally like this i mean we're used to seeing chromosomes set up like this right here's a, a pair of homologous chromosomes so this is after the dna has been replicated so we have sister chromatids that are attached but i'm going to draw everything vertically just to show you how this works and then once you become familiar with it you can kind of flip it around so i'm going to redraw uh, these two chains here okay so put it kind of vertical and there's big a notice that big a and little b are attached together and over here we have little a and big b we're crossing that with this is homozygous oops oh, oh, little a little b all right everything's good like that so when you, when you see a question like this, you should approach it the same way as you would if they weren't linked, if they weren't on the same chromosome. So again, what are the possible gametes? So if we start it here, and this is the genotype level, that's the genotype, but we must show it like this because they're actually linked. So next I'm going to move to the gamete stage. So the gamete stage, well, if I get, let me switch color here, uh, we know that in the formation of gametes, for, during meiosis, we're going to have things as separating during anaphase. So if this actually happens, one of the possible gametes that will end up is we get this as a possible gamete. All right, that's if it just splits down the center. We can get this as a possible gamete. So I've just split them up um, over here. Well, what else can we get? Can I get a big A and a big B together? So I'm going to put the gamete in a circle here. So I'm going to take a little bit of space. Can I get any other combinations from this particular parent that I'm circling right here? Well, I can. I can actually get big A and big B onto one chromosome if crossing over actually takes place here, if crossing over takes place. Let's assume that it does and that these are actually, the genes are actually far enough away for crossing over to happen. So we can get that. And if we cross over here, that means I can get a little A and a little B as well too. These are all the combinations. I need some better colors here. These are all the combinations that are coming from this particular parent. So I can get this combination, this gamete. I can get this gamete. I can get these two gametes as well. And then for the other parent, of course, this is crossing with. Now this parent, well, this parent can also produce a little a, little b. So no matter what, we're going to get a little a and a little b attached to a chromosome. We can see that right here. Now, if crossing over happens, if crossing over happens here, but look, these are all the same letters. So if crossing over happens, we're still going to get just a little a, little b. So either way you look at it, there's no new forms or combinations. You'd still end up with little a, little b. So now you can actually put these together into a Punnett square. Scroll down a little bit, and then you can see this actually happen. So if I put this, now, the just imagine if I combine each of these, I'm not going to draw a bunch of lines, it's going to get really confusing, but if I combine this, all right, I'll just draw one line, and this, well, I get this, just drawing them next to each other. That's one possible kid they can get. What's another one? Well, okay, let's, let's do these lines. If I combine this with this, then I get little a big B and a little a little b. Same thing, following the same pattern over here, like this, like this. I get a big A, big B, and a little a, little b. And then finally, this combined with this, I get a little a, little b, and a little a, little b. So now we need to go back and take a look. So these are the four new possible uh, kids, the four new possible offspring that could come from a cross between these two parents. So remember, these were the original parents that we were provided with here, and uh, I'll spray paint that. Those are the original two parents, and they're repeated right here. So now look at these new, look at these combinations here, and this is the part that's really, really important. Uh, let's 
see if you can just use this, okay? Look at these combinations. Which ones are new combinations? Well, look at this one from the far right. A, little a, little b, little a, little b. Well, that's exactly the same as this parent. That is not a new combination. That is not a new combination. So uh, let's leave that. Let's take a look. Is this a new combination? Big A, big B, little a, little b. Look at that. That is not a genotype that is present up here. So this is special. This is a recombinant. It's a new combination of genes that was made possible by uh, crossing over happening, by independent assortment, and putting all these different new gametes together. That's a recombinant. Let's take a look at this one. Is this a new combination here? Little a, big B. I see that here. With a little a, little b. That is also a new combination. I don't see that combination in the new parent, so this is also a recombinant. And then finally over here, Big A, little b, little a, little b. Is that a new combination? And that does look like a new combination as well. So these three are called recombinants because they're new combinations that weren't present there. And that's where you get these terms, basically. So if you can do the same thing, but with all the lines sideways, it's showing the exact same thing. I'm pretty sure you can represent it like this, and you won't lose any marks for a question. But the significant part of this is that uh, is to understand when we do genetics questions that sometimes some traits are carried together. They can be located on the same chromosome, like eye color and hair color are actually a lot more complicated than this, but eye color tends to go with hair color a bit, right? So you don't see a bunch of wild combinations. Darker hair on people tends to come with darker colored eyes. Okay, I hope that was all right. Uh, check it out. Answer, uh, ask me if you, if you have any questions. Uh, that'll be great. All right.